The popularity of the ocean model has resulted in its common use when assessing the gender differences in personality. However, Weisberg and colleagues argue that the big five-factor model fails to capture all the personality differences. Personality traits are hierarchically organized, with the big five being characterized as higher order factors. The dark triad traits, which consist of Machiavellianism and subclinical forms of narcissism and psychopathy, are associated with low empathy levels which explicitly define psychopathy and dishonesty. According to Gluck and colleagues, narcissism includes grandiosity, a need for admiration, a sense of entitlement, and self-admiration. Psychopathy includes antisocial behaviors, such as aggression, criminality, and lack of empathy. Machiavellianism involves interpersonal manipulation, cynicism, and opportunism. Dinnick and Jevremove maintained that the term dark triad traits was first used by Paulus and Williams to describe toxic traits found in non-clinical populations. Narcissism and psychopathy are linked to short-term focus, while Machiavellianism predicts long-term focus. Impulsivity is central to psychopathy, while narcissism is related to the approach-oriented impulsivity form. Sabo and Jones observe that impulsivity contains different maladaptive characteristic dimensions, including carelessness, fast action, poor planning, and premature decision-making. The inability to delay instant gratification and intolerance to delay action represent some common impulsivity manifestations. While impulsivity is often associated with negative outcomes, some of the common positive outcomes include being adventurous or venturesome, spontaneity, and fast information processing. These positive outcomes allow people to excel in life and the workplace, even though they don't always get along with others. Jonasson and colleagues argue that narcissism, agency, and individualism help men and women gain resources in competitive spaces. Jonasson and Kavanagh point out that all the dark triad traits often relate to the pursuit of short-term goals, even at the expense of long-term goals. This phenomenon often manifests in individualistic and competitive social styles. These social styles extend into the fast life approach, characterized by selfishness, opportunism, and impulsivity. Vernon and colleagues maintain that the dark triad traits have associations with some components of the big five factor model. For instance, narcissism is positively associated with extroversion or being outgoing and openness, while it is negatively linked to agreeableness or being cooperative and conscientiousness or being diligent. Machiavellianism correlates negatively with agreeableness and conscientiousness, and positively with neuroticism. Psychopathy correlates negatively with agreeableness and conscientiousness. Overall, the Big Five personality traits account for 18 to 39 percent of the variations in the dark triad traits. According to Dinnick and Jevremove, some of the proposed additions to the dark triad traits include spitefulness, greed, perfectionism, dependency, and social dominance. The behavioral genetics and evolutionary theories explain the origins of dark triad traits. The behavioral genetics theory suggests that genetics significantly predict psychopathy in individuals, and to a lesser but still significant degree, Machiavellianism and narcissism. The focus of dark triad traits revolves around subclinical psychopathy because 1% of the world's population is diagnosed with psychopathy but many more people exhibit the related tendencies. Gluck and colleagues argue that genetic and non-shared environmental factors account for a great majority of the variants in the dark triad traits, with minimal variation being attributed to heritability. Genetic factors mostly impact psychopathy and narcissism because the traits have a moderate to large heritable component. Machiavellianism is somewhat heritable, but shows more vulnerability to environmental pressures. According to Vernon and colleagues, the relationship between the Big Five personality and dark triad traits is associated with effects arising from similar genes. Evolutionary theories suggest that ancestral men were physically and socially punished less for being antisocial and in fact gained fitness returns in the form of more sex partners, thereby making the sexes diverge accordingly. Jonasson and colleagues argue that individuals are rewarded in various social perspectives, including romantically and vocationally, for having some dark triad traits, a phenomenon that explains their persistence despite their perception as dark or bad. Social role theories suggest that behavioral patterns are reinforced through environmental rewards. For instance, people who are rewarded for being aggressive are likely to project related behaviors compared to those who are punished. Social role theories negate the impact of biology on individual differences. 
Dark triad traits are associated with fast mating that entails constantly poaching others or being poached. Psychopathy influences impulsivity and sensitivity, while Machiavellianism informs regulation and strategy. Gluck and colleagues maintain that the environmental reinforcement of dark triad traits favors men the most because most of the underlying behaviors coincide with the traditional male role. In other words, the evolutionary perspective of the dark triad traits is linked to hegemonic masculinity, that is, the promotion and maintenance of male dominance since men allegedly report higher levels of sexism than women. The interaction between dark triad traits and masculinity could be presented as positive as in the case of the traits favoring men, and negative as in the context of criminality and taking up dangerous jobs. Gluck and colleagues also argue that hostile and benevolent sexism arise from unearned male power and privilege. Hostile sexism projects negative stereotypes against women including them being inferior, while benevolent sexism focuses on women being protective while still reinforcing gender inequality. Black and colleagues suggest that the relationship between hostile sexism and dark triad traits accounts for between 12 to 17 percent of reported gender differences. Thus, sexist ideologies could be a source of dark triad traits. The authors maintain that sexism is learned, and as such, could be unlearned. So if one sexism subcomponent is demeaning to women and the other one seeks to protect them while promoting inequality, should all quote-unquote sexism be unlearned in the pursuit of equality? In promoting female empowerment, should men stop actively seeking to protect women such as in dangerous or common everyday situations or being chivalrous because it promotes inequality? Food for thought. Dinnick and Wertag observe that aggressive behavior varies in the context of forms and functions. On the one hand, form refers to approaches through which aggression is expressed, that is, indirectly, verbally, and physically. On the other hand, functions refer to the motivations behind aggression, which could either be reactive or proactive. The reactive aggression function entails wanting to harm another person, while proactive aggression focuses on achieving some goal, such as money, social advancement, or justice. Reactive aggression is linked to experiencing a negative effect, while proactive aggression is associated with impulsive acts of excitement, a phenomenon supported by the relationship between proactive aggression and females. Agreeableness, psychopathy and Machiavellianism negatively predict reactive aggression in males, while emotionality predicts reactive aggression in females owing to the underlying anxiety and emotional reactiveness, both of which are more common in females than in males. The personality-oriented examination of aggression focuses more on function as opposed to form owing to the fact that function is more related to personality. Dinnick and Wertag maintain that the neuroticism component of the Big Five Factor model is a dominant predictor of provoked or reactive aggression, while proactive aggression has an inverse relationship with agreeableness. At the heart of the dark triad traits, that is, Machiavellianism, narcissism, and psychopathy, is antagonism callousness and manipulation. These central components explain the consistent association between dark triad traits and various aggression elements, such as animal cruelty, delinquency, violence, and bullying. Variations in aggression motivations explain the relationship between the various triad traits. Psychopathy, which is the most aggressive and undesirable trait, at least socially, strongly predicts violence, as well as reactive, and proactive aggression. Dinick and Wertag notes that psychopathy has a stronger relationship with proactive aggression in both men and women. Some of the characteristics of psychopathy include dishonesty, unreliability, guilt-free, lack of empathy, and the absence of remorse. Thus, aggression by psychopaths is cold because of their low levels of arousal and punishment reactivity. Psychopathy is associated with impulsivity in both men and women. The effect of psychopathy on aggression is followed by Machiavellianism, which is characterized by strategic approaches to aggression and is linked to proactive and reactive aggression. Sabo and Jones observe that Machiavellianism is characterized by strategic thinking and caution. Machiavellians act as psychopaths in instances where their ego is depleted, thereby being more likely to be associated with reactive aggression. This phenomenon is often termed as paradoxical considering that Machiavellianism is associated with calculated manipulation and exploitation of others for selfish reasons. This paradox is often dismissed with the association of Machiavellianism with the need for one's needs to be met at the expense of the well-being of others. 
Thus, Machiavellians could be psychopaths by showing impulsive or reactive aggression arising from ego-provoked situations. The relationship between narcissistic aggression and ego threat or provocation explained the association between narcissism and reactive aggression. Dinnick and Wertag present narcissism as the most favorable dark triad trait owing to its weakest association with aggression. Vernon and colleagues report correlations between narcissism and psychopathy, as well as Machiavellianism and psychopathy. The components of the Hexaco model include honesty humility, emotionality, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness and openness to experience. Dinnick and Wertag argue that some of the adjectives associated with the honesty humility component of the Hexaco model include fair, sincere, and modest, versus pretentious, deceitful, and greedy. Dinnick and Wertag explain that the honesty humility component has a relationship with agreeableness, emotionality, and aggression. Honesty humility has a negative relationship with both aggression functions, while agreeableness has an inverse relationship with reactive aggression. This relationship between disagreeableness and reactive aggression is mediated by effective and impulsive aggression components, including anger and low patience. Agreeableness negatively predicts retaliation or displaced aggression, while honesty humility adversely affects premeditated or calculated aggression. Honesty humility is also the only negative predictor of bullying in the Hexaco model. According to Dinnick and Wertag, Agreeableness represents the predisposition for aggression in general, while honesty humility represents the predisposition for selective and more calculated aggression. The opposite of honesty humility associated with instrumental or proactive aggression is characterized by psychopathy, delinquency, and bullying. Gender is often defined in terms of femininity and masculinity, with masculinity being associated with assertiveness, boldness, dominance, self-sufficiency, and instrumentality, while femininity is socially linked to nurturance, expression of emotion, and empathy. The findings on gender differences surrounding the function of aggression depend on the study that one is looking at, with some concluding that adult and adolescent males report more aggression, while others reporting that adults or adolescent males register similar levels of aggression as females when considering aggression beyond the physical form to include verbal aggression. For instance, Dinnick and Wertag report that men consistently score higher in dark triad traits compared to women but callous unemotional factors predict proactive overt aggression in girls, while grandiose manipulative factor better predict proactive overt aggression in boys. Aggression in general is negatively associated with agreeableness, which is commonly reported in women, and the honesty humility component of the Hexaco model. Dinnick and Wertag explain that the most interesting gender difference is the contribution of dark triad and Hexaco traits to proactive aggression. Notably, only psychopathy positively predicts aggression in males, conscientiousness predicts aggression in females in the opposite direction. Sabo and Jones explain that Machiavellianism in men is positively associated with planning, while the relationship is negative in women, a phenomenon which highlights the gender-centered effects of Machiavellianism-related outcomes. The authors suggest that girls show lower levels of impulsivity than boys, with these differences being noted even from a very young age. The relationship between men's impulsivity, women's self-control and crime explain the gender gap in justice systems. Dark personalities are taxonic among men, while they are dimensional in women. Thus, men express dark traits more clearly than women do. Machiavellianism is similar to psychopathy but only in the context of women. Particularly, highly Machiavellian women exhibit anxious and hypersensitive features. Machiavellian men, compared to Machiavellian women, are less likely to engage in short-term, mostly sexual relationships. This phenomenon is also reported in future orientation, with Machiavellian men being more self-controlled and concerned about the future, a phenomenon evidenced by low impulsivity, compared to women as documented by Sabo and Jones. In other words, Machiavellianism and non-planning impulsivity correlate negatively among men. The relationship between Machiavellianism and dysfunctional impulsivity is positive for the sexes. Thus, the relationship between impulsivity and Machiavellianism for both sexes is complicated. The opportunistic and risk-taking components of Machiavellianism explain its association with motor impulsivity, which is not affected by gender. 
Psychopathy also correlates positively with impulsivity, disinhibited neurological profiles, and carelessness for both men and women. Highly narcissistic individuals, just like men high in Machiavellianism, are able to think ahead and inhibit their impulses. The risky behaviors of narcissistic people are associated with their overconfidence. Machiavellian men, who are emotionally cold, can foresee consequences and the possible reactions, both of which tend to be beneficial in risky situations. Jonasson and Davis argue that sex-based aspects of psychology such as lack of empathy, impulsivity, and seeking dominance or prestige are more common in men than they are in women. These psychological aspects of personality enable men to enact the fast life history strategy that prioritizes mating over survival and the present over the future. Masculinity enables men to be agentic in undertaking activities that require assertiveness. Femininity encourages compassion, and as such, it is highly likely to interfere with aggression in females. According to Jonasson and Davis, men are more psychopathic and Machiavellianism than women are, and women are more feminine than men are but the sexes do not differ in masculinity or narcissism. More masculinity is associated with more psychopathy and narcissism whereas more femininity is associated with less psychopathy and less Machiavellianism. Narcissism is the strongest correlate of masculinity, while psychopathy is linked to limited femininity. All in all, psychopathy is antisocial while narcissism is prosocial. The gender differences and dark triad traits are also presented in self-reported meat-eating behaviors, with men being less likely than women to report that they are vegetarian or vegan. Mertens and colleagues explain that gender differences in Machiavellianism significantly predict meat-eating justifications and subsequent behaviors. Schmidt and colleagues' publication of 2016 uncovered that men reported higher levels of Machiavellianism, narcissism, and psychopathy. Egalitarian societies, such as Iceland, New Zealand, Denmark, and Netherlands, present greater sex-based differences in the dark triad behaviors, compared to others, such as Ethiopia, Malaysia, South Korea, and Tanzania. Jonasson and colleagues explain that narcissism is very sensitive to country-level variables. These variables include development, corruption levels, the freedom to engage in economically viable activities, democracy, internal strife, and gender distribution. Developed societies are characterized by less competition for scarce resources. Countries also differ in the context of cultural variables such as harmony, mastery, egalitarianism, hierarchy, effective autonomy, intellectual autonomy, and embeddedness. These variables influence relationship management, maintaining social order, and treating natural resources. Countries with more embedded and hierarchical cultural systems are more narcissistic. Embedded cultures emphasize obedience, security, tradition, social order, and collective identity. Intellectually autonomous countries value creativity and curiosity. Effective autonomous countries emphasize having fun, including pleasure-seeking, Normative cultures value hierarchy and the asymmetrical distribution of resources or power, thereby endorsing social power and authority. Egalitarian cultures are socially progressive and support social justice by emphasizing equality. Jonasson and colleagues point out that gender-specific differences are greater and more developed compared to developing societies, a phenomenon that goes against predictions by social role theories. Women are less likely to be narcissistic in developed compared to developing countries. These culture-based gender differences are founded on the fact that men and women in liberal cultures are more willing to express their personalities compared to less liberal cultures, characterized by religious, political, legal, and social constraints. Thus, women do not have to engage in antisocial behaviors in liberal societies as they would in less liberal ones for competition for resources. The life history theory suggests that when confronted by trade-offs, individuals are required to allocate their time and energy in a manner that maximizes fitness. Optimal resource allocation varies over a lifetime and as such, the theory examines how evolution shapes the timing of life events involved in aging, reproduction, growth, and development. Psychology as a field aims to understand the psychological nature of organism adaptation. The relationship between evolutionary psychology and the life history theory is often examined along two dimensions. First, humans invest in the timely process of developing, maintaining, operating, and utilizing psychological adaptations. 
Second, optimizing time and resource investment decisions require the processing of environmental information that is relevant to decision making. Jonasson and Kavanagh argue that the life history theory focuses on how psychological systems collaborate to solve adaptive tasks like mating and mate selection. Sociologist John Allen Lee used a color wheel to map the three primary styles of love, that is, Eros, Ludus, and Storgi. Various combinations of the three primary styles of love gave rise to an additional three secondary styles of love, that is, Pragma, Mania, and Agape. Eros, summarized as erotic and passionate, is characterized by the sense of an inevitable relationship, selective preference in physical appearance, emotional intensity, and strong physical attraction. Ludus, summarized as uncommitted or game-playing, encompasses the perception of love as a game, with the end goal being having as many partners as possible over a specific period of time. Storky love is friendship-oriented, thereby focusing on quietness and companionship. Pragma, which combines Storky and Ludus, is summarized as practical and calculating love, involves the careful selection of partners by listing desirable attributes such as personality, background, religion, and age. Online dating is a common example of the pragma style of loving. Mania combines Eros and Ludus and is described as obsessional, high intense, and alternates between agony and ecstasy. Agape love, which combines Storgi and Eros, is altruistic, giving, and sacrificial, where an individual prioritizes their partner's well-being over their own. Jonasson and Kavanagh explains that individuals who register high levels of dark triad traits express ludic and pragmatic love. Notably, ludic love allows individuals with dark triad personalities to emotionally detach from others, thereby easily going around having short-term relationships. The relationship between dark personalities and ludic love is found in sensation-seeking. Dark triad traits mediate the adoption of ludic love, which implies that the related psychological systems influence the adoption of agentic social styles. Individuals with dark personalities are well capable of loving with their heads as opposed to their hearts, thereby being able to effectively play games. Jonasson and Kavanagh point out that ludic love is localized to psychopathy owing to the hunger for excitement and sensation. The association between the dark triad traits and the pragmatic loving style is founded on the lack of emotions or empathy. Pragmatic love accurately depicts the life history theory through the pursuit of short-term gains, selfishness, aggressiveness, and deviance. Individuals with dark personalities do not pursue relationships for love but for service or what the other person has to offer them. The emotionless component of dark triad traits also manifests as manic love. Dark personalities have strong bias towards short-term sexual relationships that are mostly focused on the physical attraction of the partner thereby highlighting the association with the Eros loving style. However, some short-term maters could be more interested in what they can get as opposed to what the other person looks like. Men scoring higher than women in dark triad traits implies that they are more likely to adopt ludic and Eros loving styles. Dark triad traits are unrelated to selflessness, intimacy, and closeness, with these elements being associated with agape and stalky love. However, Jonasson and Kavanagh report a relationship between Machiavellianism and agape love, as well as all the other loving styles except Eros, because Machiavellians are generally sociable. Men score higher in ludic and agape loving styles. Overall, the gender differences in loving styles are a reflection of the variations in psychological systems. Dark triad traits inform the adoption of ludic and pragma love, as well as interest in short-term relationships. Narcissism is the most social or approach-oriented dark triad trait and is linked to the desire for a variety of relationships, an externally validated ego, reinforcement of the sense of self, and casual sex. Jonasson, Luevano, and Adams observe that narcissism correlates with the preference for one-night stands and friends with benefits. The authors maintain that between 25 and 75 percent of sexual acts by college students and adolescents happen in the context of non-committed relationships. Narcissists are open to a wide range of relationships, including booty calls, friends with benefits and serious relationships, thereby having access to a wide range of sociosexual interactions. Psychopathy correlates with the preference for booty call relationships and mediates the underlying sex differences owing to the related explosiveness characteristics. Psychopathy is considered part of the cheater strategy and exploitative. 
The parental investment theory suggests that gender differences in psychological systems arise from variations in sexual selection pressures related to reproduction and offspring obligations. The fact that men pay fewer costs for engaging in short-term relationships explains the gender differences in the preferences for such relationships, with women being more interested in long-term relationships.